bet horse racing on DRF Bets. We'll match your first deposit up to $250, get free expert picks and past performances, plus weekly cash back, all from Daily Racing Form, the most trusted name in horse racing. Hi, everybody. Dan Oman, Mike Beer, the DRF Race of the Day for Saturday, June the 5th. It's got to be the Belmont Stakes, the third jewel in racing's Triple Crown. Before we get to the analysis, head on over to DRF.com. Take your 25% off the retail price for your Belmont Stakes winner's package. Get those past performances, exclusive clock reports, betting strategies, and the player's guide. Here's the field for the Belmont Stakes, and you can download free formulator PPs for the Belmont on the Race of the Day event page at DRF.com. Access them, handicap along with us. Rombauer, the number three, won the Preakness, Mike. He's three to one second choice behind Essential Quality, who lost nothing in defeat in the Derby, in my opinion, except his undefeated record. I agree with that. Uh, he, he ran fine in the Derby with a little bit of an excuse in that race for sure. Uh, many of these horses that, that ran well in the Kentucky Derby have elected to, as, as is the usual case now, they skipped the Preakness, and they're all back now for the Belmont. And one of those horses had a big excuse at Churchill Downs. Let's throw up the time form U.S. pace projector. Santa Anita Derby winner, Rock Your World, the number seven. He went gate to wire in the Santa Anita Derby. He was expected to be a strong pace presence in the Kentucky Derby. And then the gates opened up. Rock Your World got banged around. And it was game over after the first furlong. Right. He lost all chance at the start. So it feels like at, at, in this race, you know, they got to go a mile and a half then, but it feels like they'll just take no prisoners this time. Um, they went into that derby trying to find out really how good this horse was, and they didn't get a chance to find it out. I guess we'll find out on Saturday. Interesting to see the Japanese invader, the five, France Godeina, who mid-moved into a fast Preakness pace up close. I'm not sure those are the tactics that they want to use here, but it's nice to see that Hot Rod Charlie can be close to the pace. Essential quality's best asset is arguably his tactical speed. He can be placed anywhere his rider wants, and Rombauer is showing improved tactical speed as he matures. Yeah, true enough. That, that's been a, a real benefit to Ron Bauer in his last couple of races, and it certainly helped his chances. Hot Rod Charlie is going to be up close, but you can ride him however you want to ride him. Same with Essential Quality. These horses will get the trips that they need to get. It'll just be interesting to see you know, how early they go after Rock Your World if he indeed makes the lead. The Wood Memorial winner at a big price. The number one Bourbonic is hoping the pace is fast and furious, as it sort of was in the wood. The fractions don't look fast, but that race fell apart late, and it fell into Bourbonic's hooves. 13th in the Derby, I didn't see much of an excuse. Yeah, he just didn't run well in that race at all. It was a much tougher spot for him, and he didn't um, class up with those horses. You know, it wasn't the kind of race where you wanted to be outrun early and trying to make a big run, Dan. The race didn't set up that way. Um, they're going to hope that the Belmont does set up that way. They're going to ride him the same way they rode him in the Wood Memorial. Sit back, make one run, and hope that they come back for him. Essential quality won the first five starts of his career, including the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. He was the champion two-year-old of 2020, and he prepped for the Derby with a successful victory in the Bluegrass Stakes at Keeneland. Let's watch that race. It was a race where there was no pace on paper. Essential quality wisely got close to pace setter highly motivated. Highly motivated might be a little bit distance challenged, and essential quality wore him down. Of the four horses involved in sort of that one-length photo finish in the Derby, you could argue argue essential quality ran one of the better races simply because he lost ground after being bumped early and was wide most of the way. Yeah, that's true. Um, he ran well in this race that we're watching with a perfect trip. That was Ron Bauer. You saw back there in third, making no impact late. Um, so, you know, I think that's something to keep in mind. And here, essential quality is probably the horse to beat here. Um, he's going to look for a little redemption. You're hundred percent correct that in his Kentucky Derby, of the top four finishers, he probably took the worst of it. He got bumped at the start. He was wide all the way. He was very game uh, through the stretch to, to finish a close fourth. Um, the problem with, I guess, if you're going to take another short price on him, Dan, is that was the first time in his entire career where everything didn't go perfectly for him, where he didn't get a perfect trip. Um, and that's kind of where you find out about these horses. He didn't run poorly at all. He ran well. But the first time he didn't get a perfect trip, he got beat. 
Rombauer, the number three, wins the Preakness. Let's take a look at Rombauer. And what I like best about this race, yes, he took advantage that this pace really heated up the middle part, but he was able to stay within range and not lose ground as the leaders tried to get away. Really one of the only chasers that was able to keep the leaders within range. And now this little horse just blows by some good ones. The exhausted Midnight Bourbon, the even more exhausted Medina Spirit. This horse is coming into his own at the right time, and he still seems fresh as a daisy. Yeah, I think that those things are true, Dan, and it's, those are things to definitely consider about this horse who, as of three weeks ago, was a maiden on the dirt and was 11-1 to 1 against a horrendous field at the Preakness. He ran really well in that race. I'm not going to knock him. He is fastest on the way in here, and he could certainly improve again. I could never take a short price on him, Dan. That was a terrible field that he beat last time with a perfect trip. This is a way tougher race. Hot Rod Charlie is consistent. He is tactical. He is fresh. Let's go back to his start in the Robert B. Lewis, three starts back. This was his first start of the year, and he's in against Medina Spirit, and I kind of like this performance. He's in between. He's battling it out. He only gets beat a neck. He didn't have the easiest trip. He bounced out of it with a very confident win in the Louisiana Derby, and in the Kentucky Derby, Mike, he was just all heart and determination. I think there's a scenario here where he's in front when they turn for home. Yeah, I mean, I think he's going to get a good trip too. Um, just because he's so tactical, Dan, you can just sort of ride him however you want to ride him. I think he will get a good trip in here. I thought his derby was fine. I liked his Louisiana derby quite a bit. Um, and I think more than anything else, those races and the one that we just showed, the Lewis, um, what they really did was they showed that his Breeders' Cup last year where he was almost 100 to 1, um, they showed that it was no fluke. I mean, he came out of nowhere in that race and he ran great making, you know, he wound up getting beat less than a length by essential quality. He made the first move into that wicked pace and he just got beaten there. That race showed that he's good and he's backed it up. Fransco de Aina is a very temperamental horse. He needs to be saddled away from everybody else. And he pulled hard in the early stages of the Preakness. It was very surprising to everybody watching in the press box how close he was. And then he made a bid on the backstretch to try to split horses and get into contention. But almost as soon as he was in the race, he was out of it. And I wonder if that shows that maybe these horses are a little too tough for him. Yeah, that's kind of how I looked at it, too. I mean, he made the briefest of moves up to contention there in the backstretch, but he just as quickly as he got up there, he was out of the race once again. It just felt like he doesn't match up with these horses. Maybe he'll run better here. He's going to be a huge price. The distance, I suppose, could be to his advantage. I thought he was hard to like. Known agenda, perhaps maybe a forgotten horse coming into the Belmont Stakes. He won the Florida Derby two starts back and looked like a horse that was full of potential coming into the Kentucky Derby. Now, he doesn't have the most speed in the world, so he's going to hope for a little bit of pace. The Derby was a little bit disappointing for Known Agenda, but he's had his time off. We know Pletcher likes to do this. Skip the Preakness, run from the Derby to the Belmont, and if he gets lucky from a trip and pace standpoint, I can see this horse firing late. I agree. I, I considered putting him on top in this race. Then I think he will run better here, and boy, he better uh, improve off of his derby. He had a, the mildest of excuses in there, Dan, where he broke from the rail, and he just doesn't have enough speed to get forward in a race like that. So he just wound up way back out of position. Um, it wasn't the kind of race where you wanted to be way out of it and trying to make a run. Um, so he has those excuses my problem is he just didn't do any running at all in that race. It was overall a very disappointing performance. I think he's going to bounce back and run better here, but I couldn't totally talk myself into him. Rock Your World won the first three starts of his career, including a down-the-road speed show in the Santa Anita Derby over Medina Spirit, who, of course, came back to win the Kentucky Derby. And as we mentioned when talking about the pace projector, he lost all chance at the start of the Kentucky Derby. So Rock Your World is going to be hustled out of there by Joel Rosario, and we'll see how far he can take them. Exactly. I mean, maybe he's good enough to beat this field, Dan. I don't think it would be the biggest shock in the world if he was. Um, but we just, you know, you just don't know. And you have a lot. He has a lot to prove in here at what feels like isn't going to be a great price. I thought his standing in Derby was fine, but it didn't make me want to bet him back in the Kentucky Derby for sure. And obviously he had a big excuse there, but I'm still in the position now where I don't know how good he is, at least as a dirt horse. And I don't want to take, you know, something like four or five to one to find out.
overtook the number eight, cost seven figures as a yearling. He has a lovely pedigree. He's trained by Todd Pletcher, and he ran a decent race in the Peter Pan, the local prep for the Belmont. The race was slow, but it just seems like this horse is taking incremental steps forward. Let's watch Overtook's finish in the Peter Pan, his first start since February, where he was second in the Withers. On the outside is Overtook. Kind of a mild rally. This is a horse that should appreciate the distance, but boy, he has to run faster. Maybe the blinkers spur massive improvement. Yeah, maybe they do. They certainly spurred massive improvement for his stablemate known agenda. So maybe it could work for this horse too. No real excuse and nothing really to see here in the Peter Pan, Dan. You saw there in the upper stretch, he sort of had his sights on the one, two finishers there and just never made up any ground on them. Um, he's got to run a lot better than that. Top pick time for the grade one Belmont Stakes, the third jewel of the Triple Crown. You're going with Hot Rod Charlie. Maybe it's his turn. He's been so game in his races uh, this spring. He was so game in the Kentucky Derby. And with his tactical ability, I can see another good trip. Yeah, that's what I liked about him. It felt like he's probably going to be no better than third choice in this race. I like that about him as well. Um, I just feel like he makes a lot of sense in this race, Dan. Maybe he won't get the distance, but I just feel like he's going to handle whatever they throw at him here. And I just think he's one of the major players in the race. I think the little bump at the start hurt essential quality in the Derby because it kind of forced him to be a little farther back than usual, and it forced them to be wide around both turns. I want to give him one more chance off of that race. I think from a talent standpoint, he's as good, if not better, than these horses. Four, two, three, six for Mike. Two, three, four, six for me. Same super, different order. Grade one Belmont Stakes. Sensational card at Belmont Park on Saturday. Best of luck.